This set of videos is about folding paper in a certain way, which is one way to introduce exponents. I would like to share my outline so that you'll know what I'll be talking about and in what order. First, I would like to give examples of actually folding paper in this certain way. First would be folding into two parts and doing that for three times, into three parts and doing that for two times, and then trying to do it into five parts for seven times. Then I'll be talking about the pattern when you fold paper in this certain way. I'll be talking about what happens when you fold into two parts and do that for three times, three parts and do that for two or three times, and then I'll be discussing the pattern. Then I'll be talking about exponents. First, I'll explain that there's a need for a shortcut for repeating multiplication. Then I'll define exponents, at least for their basic types. And then I'll give a list of some other applications about exponents in the real world. I am going to be folding this piece of paper into two parts for three times. So this is the first time I'm folding this piece of paper into two parts. Here is the second time I'm folding this piece of paper into two parts. And lastly, here's the third time I'm folding this piece of paper into two parts. Now, please predict how many sections will be created by the folding, and why do you think so? Okay, now I'm gonna unfold this piece of paper. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. In this example, we folded the paper each time into two parts. We did this for a total of three times. And we ended up with eight sections. In this example, I'm gonna be folding this piece of paper into three parts and do that for a total of two times. So I'm switching the numbers two and three. Here for the first time. Now for the second time. So I just fold the piece of paper one time into three parts, and now I'm going to do it for a second time. How many sections do you think we'll have? Now let's unfold the piece of paper. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sections. In this example, we folded the paper into three parts each time. We did that for a total of two times. And we were left with nine sections. Suppose that I fold a piece of paper into five parts for a total of seven times. How many sections will I have when I unfold everything? First, you may wonder, how do I fold a piece of paper into five parts? I like to do it as so. So I'm folding over by the left side and the right side, but I haven't creased anything yet. 
I'm trying to eyeball that all three visible sections that you can see are equal, approximately. Then I crease the left side and the right side. Then I fold over this. Then you can fold over it again. And then just to check when we undo it, indeed we do have five sections. Okay, so that was the first time. We're supposed to do this for a total of seven times, so we have six more to go. Let's now do the second time of folding into five parts. So I'm going to use the same method as before. These three parts look about equal. Creasing it well. Folding over. Folding over again. And that was our second time of folding into five parts. We have now five more times left over because we want to do this for a total of seven times. Now let's do the third time of folding it. So I'm trying to have a right side and the left side being folded over and making it equal but it's not budging much at all. And there seems like there's no way I can do the fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh time of folding over. So, it seems like I cannot use this piece of paper to find out how many sections I would have if I folded a piece of paper into five parts for a total of seven times. Instead, let's find out a pattern of what happened in the previous two examples and then apply it to this case. Part two in this series of videos is about the pattern it is about how you can know how many sections there will be without actually folding. Attached is a link you can click if you would wish.